Hey folks, we are on a tributary of the tidal Potomac in Virginia with Scylla again and um, we're we're gonna make a long run we're gonna we're gonna do some exploring see some some stuff we haven't seen yet before um, one of the things I wanted to, to touch on was range knowledge of the the torpedo any torpedo product has built-in range knowledge and I'm gonna show you how that works but it's similar in many ways to does your your truck you have a what it's a Ford F250 F150 F all right I got the same F F150 um, and it has the you know it has the calculator for how many miles until you get to empty and that's really what the range calculator is um, which I think is nice because I've I, I know I've been out on tournaments on a bass boat uh, on electric only waters right. relying on a trolling motor and actually missed way in because the the power throughout the the drawdown dropped uh -huh. off and we we didn't have enough speed and, and it, we got back but we were too slow right but our setup with uh, with the 915 watt hour battery you have full speed all the way up until it's it's exhausted but it won't catch us off guard because well we'll show you how yeah, the range calculator that. works <laughs> all right so we are just putting along real easy i'm actually at 2.2 miles per hour let's show you how that uh the range calculator on the throttle works so we're at 100 percent of the battery 2.3 miles per hour and we're drawing 43 out of 1100 watts and it uses 100 percent of the 915 watt hour battery speed watt draw to calculate this what this is this is showing me that we have almost 50 miles of range 48 about 48 miles of range at 2.2 miles per hour let's crank it up and let's get let's get going a more reasonable speed you know what forget that let's go let's use a lot of the power now mind you it it you know it factors in the tide or wind or whatever other conditions you're fighting if you have a lot of gear in your boat it's it's not going to be as efficient uh but right now i'm going 6.4 six five six and a half mile an hour and i have 4.7 miles of range 4.6 we're going to need more than 4.6 miles of range today we're going to go a long distance so six and a half isn't gonna isn't gonna be good um, I'm gonna slow down and we'll just kind of cruise along I don't know let's let's uh, let's see how much range we have at five mile an hour or thereabouts here I'm at 52 and I have 10.8 I'm gonna back off a hair because I think we're gonna end up doing about 17 miles today so I've, I've mapped out where I wanted to go and you also want to leave in a little bit of room for you know for motoring once you're there just to hold in place because of wind or current or anything else so right now i'm going four and a half mile an hour 4.4 mile per hour and i have almost 17 miles of range so It'll change, you know, throughout the day as we, you know, as we use up some of the power, um, you know, we'll, we'll keep an eye on it. It's always right there. You always know, just like your gas gauge on your truck, you know, hey, is it time to fill up? Well, we're, we can't recharge out here. You know, there's no, <laughs> there's no plugs out here to, to hook up, but I don't think, you know, we're going to run out and, and, um, we're going to be able to do everything we need to do just because we have that range knowledge and we'll be able to get to the spots that we want to explore today and uh and get back so.
finally got all the way to the back of this creek, throwing a chatterbait. Got the first one here. And I can start, I can see some spatter dock just starting to come up. It's just below the surface. And, uh, you know, there's a, there's a channel edge coming right along here. And just throwing the jackhammer along that edge, got the first one. So I think we've probably covered close to six miles getting here. So this is water that I don't think a bass boat can get to real easy. It's, uh, we have lower tide, you know, tide is, is still going out. And uh, we've had to kind of push up through here in a couple places to get, to get, you know, to get up through some of these tight spots. But I don't think these are, these fish are pressured a whole lot. The so first one in the boat. See you guys. Getting them out of the grass, out of the real shallow emerging grass. All right, come aboard, fishy. Getting them on the gold shiner chatterbait or the jackhammer with the. Uh, the trailer there is the diesel minnow in what's that called redfish toad in that emerging grass all right i've uh gone about as far as i can go being that it's low tide we just timed this wrong it's a very cool looking spot back here and uh I definitely want to come back, but I'm losing water. Like, I've got stuck twice coming up in this, this little mud flat, and I can see fish moving in the shallows up there. It's sort of maddening. Let's take a look at what's, what's up there, you know, that I got to come back and explore this at high tide. Some really nice looking water. We'll zoom up there. Just imagine this with another two two and a half feet of water where all that would be covered and you got all that wood up there I'm sure we got depth again once you get up there all the emerging vegetation all that grass coming up beautiful creek here that uh, you know bass boats not getting in here I don't think they're getting in here at high tide but I better get out of here because it is low tide because I don't want to wait another but 12 hours to, uh, or at least six hours to get back out. All right, I got my work cut out for me. <laughs> so what, what battery percentage do you have left? I am at 57%. 57, I got 51. And we you- We have gone a total of 6.2 miles. All right, 6.2 miles, we're, we're halfway and we're gonna head back here. Uh, so we got 6.2 to go. How are you? How are you figuring that out? So I'm using the anchor app, and um, I started started our trip. Um, it's my one catch that I have there. So we came up all the way around this point, um, which is 6.2 miles. And if you just click the little tool button, it'll tell you there your distance. Sorry, I have yellow chartreuse dye, and then how long the total trip time so far is, which is five hours in 26 minutes all right so 6.2 what we can do is set this for as fast as we can and get the remaining range here to 6.2 yeah that'll work 6.3 so remaining range of 6.3 miles and uh Scylla's pointing out i'm not paying attention i'm going the wrong way so <laughs> might take longer we'll see but we're heading back that's what range knowledge gives you is the ability to explore pretty far away from where you know where you launch and have the certainty uh that you can get back with a great degree of accuracy so we're heading back now she actually has to get going but uh i'm probably gonna stick around and fish another little creek by the launch we'll see how that goes so one of the features of this battery 
the 915 watt hour battery or the 320, I have 1% left on my phone and it comes with this USB plug and I'm basically going to use it to charge my cell phone back up. So it's a good thing to hold on to that USB plug. It actually goes right into where you, the little port where you charge it. And go ahead and plug that in and uh, it's charging. I'll let that sit back there and charge and we'll continue on our uh, return trip. And I think it's, you know, the debt that it's going to put in uh, in that battery in terms of saving battery, you know, energy on the way back is, is nothing compared to what I'm using. So not a big deal. I still got 26% and uh, we're not too far off. Alright, I got 15% left, and at my current speed I can still go 3.8 miles. What's your what's your remaining percentage? 22. 22? 5.3 left. And that's our launch. It's my rate. Uh, there it is. Even it now 14%, I can still mash it. You know, you can't do that with the trolling motor. You lose power as it as the drawdown occurs. You know, with this setup, you know, I'm still going over six mile an hour even though I'm almost done with the uh, the battery. All right, Scylla's packed up. <laughs> I know. I can stand next to you. <laughs> so, what was it, 12? Well, about 12 miles, yeah. Yeah, a little over 12. Mm -hmm. Cool. Good, good to know that we can make it there and back. I still had 21% battery when I got back here. I still so. got a little bit of power left. I'm going to run up in a creek around the corner. So Go get them. I'll catch you next time. Bye, See guys. You. Stay safe. So I'm going to cruise on back to the creek. See if I can find some more tidal largemouth to eat the uh, gold shiner jackhammer. Uh, you jumped twice. You gonna jump again? Nope. Went to the back of the creek, found some wood, found a bass. Um, the difference is, in the last creek I was in, it was outgoing, and now it's incoming. And this chunky monkey was waiting by the log. Thought he liked that gold bait fish to chew on chunker see you all right let's see if he's got friends i bet he does Ooh. yep yep right away oh that was a nice jump thank you Oh, it's pretty much immediate. One right after another. Find the wood. Cookie cutter. <laughs> All right. So the vibration of the chatterbait helps them find in this this muddy water and the blade just continually pop 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 is hitting that tungsten head uh, snag, snagged on wood there but all right, I gotta go in I actually lifted the motor I forgot that I lifted it because it got so shallow back here the other thing I'll do is I'll go back into that spot where I got those two back to back and I'll put a jig on it give them something fast and then give them something slow because there wasn't just one fish on that spot I bet you there's a bunch of them got my brush jig this one's a 3 8 ounce I've been pouring all sorts of sizes 
just so you have different options of different rates of fall and I got a little bit of everything represented in my my jig slash chatterbait box here a little bit of everything there I got ounce and a quarter chatterbaits I got eighth ounce finesse jigs a little bit of everything so all I'm trying to do with this brush jig is line it up oh, I didn't like that bring it out a little bit line it up with the log currents rolling this way just let it tickle underneath there let the current just kind of let it fold right underneath there and I'm dragging it along waiting for that thunk. or sometimes it's only a little bit of a throb or just kind of hey it's not on bottom anymore it's just kind of floating there in space in a fish's mouth in space alright this is going to do it that's where I got the first one Ooh, that's a good one. Nice big fish. Nice big largy. He was out a little further on the same cluster of logs. Mm. Yep, that's big for the day. <laughs> so far, it's a good one. So, you go in fast with a chatterbait and you, you get what you get but if you know there's a bunch of them in there um, you go back in and you slow it down with a jig and you pick up a few more uh, that's a good one she's a chunky monkey all right back you go see a chunker That was a one where you just have the throb. It just kind of something's something's tugging. Not not moving real fast, but but definitely moving. And there's a huge log jam down in there. Whole lot of stuff going on, and I could feel it. Feel the jig head hop over log, settle down, and then I felt that throb I'd like to feel that again please it's the only place there's depth and current here and there's wood the rest of this is a big mud flat it almost seems all right let's do a compare contrast certainly we're catching them off of wood but not all wood that is the same I have some wood here in front of me that I took a couple casts at, didn't have a whole lot of faith in. You tell me why. Right in there. You know, maybe in higher flow, maybe if there was deeper water, but that's not what I'm getting at. The main thing that you need to know where it's a feeding station is wood with a little bit of depth but with current current creates you know feeding opportunities ambush opportunities where the bass lay down underneath the log and wait for things to come over and they grab them so wood depth current those three things and we have an incoming tide i gotta keep going upstream see if i can find some more wood with current in a little bit of depth so we're back to the the good wood, the wood with some depth and current. It's a subtle difference. I want you to take a look, see if you can tell. That's the log two the three came off of. 
So a little bit of a current seam. You can see that little twig trailing back and that goes into a little bit deeper water and the other one was exposed but it was up here and uh, it's already covered over by the, the tide that's coming up. So, Still don't know what I'm talking about. Still not able to identify the Goodwood. Well, we're coming up on the second piece, the one where I got the first fish. And I'm going to get you real close so you can see what I saw. It's a little bit higher tide than when I saw it at first, but here it is. A little bit of disturbance right there. Let's get up on it close. Let's get another example. There we got some minnows hopping out here. Go right there. You can kind of see the scum kind of sliding across that wood there. See that movement and an eddy line. That's what you're looking for. Oh, I got one, and he is pegged to the log. I think he might have gotten off. Nope, I still see him moving. Oh, <laughs> I pinned his cheek to it. Oh, get off. Oh, he's good. Oh, is he big? Oh, is he nice fish? Mmm, gotcha. Yeah. Good one. Late in the day. Wood with depth and current. Mm. Glad that hook stayed in him. I'm always surprised. I guess I shouldn't be. Okay. I only got him off. Nice chunky. All right, so I'll end on that one. I know I'm running out of daylight and they actually lock the gates at eight, so I need to hurry up. I will say that I've been able to stay out here. Hello, fish. Later than anybody else. Uh, just because I got the motor, I can zoom out and I can stay out longer. So it's been a nice, uh, nice thing to zoom out of here six and a half, seven mile an hour.